Hey boaters, it's Jim from Ray Marine, bringing you our next chapter in our Electronics for First Responder series. Today we're going to be talking about radar, and joining me is Tom Patassi from the Ray Marine team. How are you, Tom? Good, Jim. How are you today? Pretty good. So radar, obviously a super important tool out on the water for first responders. Yes. Um, what types of radar systems do we have in our portfolio that we suggest for these types of boats? So great question. Um, We've got four different options for the first responders. So it really depends on boat size, budget, um, you know, how much space you have to mount something. So the first we'll talk about is, is our radar domes. Okay. Uh, we've got our Quantum 2, which is our solid state Doppler dome. It's a, an 18 inch radar, uh, very light, solid state, low power consumption, great for a real small vessel. Um, you know, can mount it pretty much anywhere. Mm -hmm. You can even connect it via Wi Fi. Um, so, so a great choice there. Um, the next up would be the, the Magnetron version, which is the um, HD version. It's an 18 inch dome again. Uh, that's a four kilowatt dome. So it's a much more powerful radar. Um, does a great job. Um, you know, either one of those domes is, is, is great. Um, really just personal preference. The, um, the quantum dome, I should uh, also say that it does include the Doppler side. Yeah, the Doppler's well. pretty cool. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail in a yes, second. Yes, but Doppler's definitely something to consider, particularly I think if you have um, inexperienced yep, uh, operators, um, it definitely takes a lot of the guesswork out of radar. It does. It's it's a it's a great tool. Um, and then we move into the, the open array version. The open array um, come in two different styles. We have our, our Magnum radar, which is a, uh, again, a magnetron style radar. It comes in 4KW and a 12KW. Uh, it comes in a four foot and a six foot array. So space um, is, is a, a constraint that a lot of these vessels, you know, have that, mm -hmm. that you, know, you may or may not be able to fit that radar. Yeah, they tend um, to have a lot of what, antennas and searchlights and flare cameras and yeah, there's all sorts of stuff up it there. Gets, it gets busy up there in a hurry. But um, you know, the, mag the, ma the open array magnetron radar is really going to provide you a fantastic radar. It's got a very narrow beam. It gives you great target separation. Um, you know, just an, a, a good all around radar. Okay. Uh, now we also have our very exciting new cyclone radar. Yeah, that's a great uh, one to consider. And, and this really, um, yeah, you know, as you like to say, it kind of checks all the boxes. Yeah. Uh, so cyclone actually is available in three different um, sizes. It's a three foot, a four foot, and a six foot. And it comes in a, a, a 55 or 110 watt version. The 55 is closer to a 6KW, and that uh, 110 is closer to a 12KW, so very powerful radars. Mm -hmm. uh, but really the exciting thing about it, in my opinion, is, is the three foot version, um, because it really opens up a lot of boats to, to be able to put just fantastic radar on. I mean, we've got it on boats as, as you know, small as 21 feet. Yeah. And it, it fits on the top very nicely. Um, it's solid state. It does the Doppler. It's very powerful. It's got some amazing new features built into it. So uh, certainly what I would consider to be our, our, our go-to product now. Yeah, you really get all the top level performance and capabilities without the overwhelming size or weight Yes. Constraints. Yep. That's pretty cool. So really what it comes down to is, is, you know, personal preference. What's what mission they're going to be, you know, tasked to do. Is this an inshore vessel up a river system or is this going to be an open water vessel? Um, all those things come into play when, when, you know, making radar selection. Very good. Yeah. Well, let's actually take a look at some radar. I'm going to bring up our product camera and let me click here. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is kind of the layout of the radar scope. Um, for those of you who have operated radar in the past, this is going to look familiar. Um, if you've never operated a radar before, this sometimes can look a little intimidating, but I promise it's actually not that bad. Um, so I'm just going to kind of work my way clockwise, excuse me, clockwise around the screen here uh, and describe some of the controls and what we are looking at. Um, so whenever we uh, are looking at a radar scope, actually, I'm going to start in the center. Um, the center is where you are located. That is your boat in the center of the scope. Uh, right now, we are in the geometric center of the screen as well, uh, but it is possible that this could be pulled backwards to give you a little bit more visibility, um, but that's a little bit more advanced topic. Um, but for our purposes today, you are in the center of the scope. Um, we have these rings emanating out from the center. These are called range rings. So these give you an idea of how far you can see. Our rings are spaced out currently at one half nautical mile uh, intervals. 
And I can tell that from this little indicator on the bottom right corner. That's my ring spacing. Um, from the center of the scope uh, to the 12 o'clock position is one and a half miles. So from the center here, all the way out to the top, one and a half miles, that's the range scale that I have selected. Now you'll notice on this range ring here, I have a bunch of compass uh, bearings uh, indicated here. Um, this tells me that my radar scope is stabilized and it's actually receiving a signal from my boat's compass sensor. Uh, so this is actually the uh, true points of the compass here. Um, so I can see what direction um, the radar scope is oriented in. This white line that connects the center of the scope out to the 12 o'clock position, this is called the ship's heading marker. And that just shows me where the boat is pointed. Uh, so it's theoretically a radar target that was following right down this ship's heading marker is something that you would collide with eventually. Um, but that gives you an idea of uh, where the bow is. So anything to the left of the ship's heading marker would be passing down hopefully the port side of the boat. Anything to the right side will come down your starboard. Um, we have some other controls on the edges of the screen. This is actually to get into the menu and we'll look at this in detail in a second, but that is menu access there. Again, range, uh, ring intervals. Um, this is your range adjustment controls. So you've got a plus and a minus here. So if you want to uh, zoom in or zoom out the radar scope, you can do it via touch. Uh, on our uh, Axiom Pro units, you also have buttons you can use to do that, or you can twist the rotary knob and do the same thing. Um, this is a status bar down here. So we are in harbor mode. We are in heading up and we are in relative motion. And the last thing I'll point out to you here is uh, this kind of graphic equalizer looking button that brings up uh, some controls here for bearing selections, true or relative. Um, we also have some radar sensitivity controls. We'll talk about those uh, in just a second. So that kind of gives you an overview uh, of the radar scope. Anything that I missed, Tom, you want to add in there? No, that was great. You covered every everything. The only thing I would mention uh, on our radars is the uh, range ring that has the bearing marks on it, the compass mark. Um, our radar PPI actually will move with the boat. Mm -hmm. um, when you are seeing that information populated there, like Jim said, it doesn't mean that you have heading information from the vessel's heading sensor. Um, so as you turn the boat, our radar image actually spins with you uh, and continues to give you live and updated information. Whereas in days of old, as you turn the boat, you'd have to wait for that radar to scan one full rotation before yeah, you would update that information. That doesn't happen anymore. It's automatically uh, there. You never lose it. Yeah, that's a great a great feature there. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the settings on these radars. Um, maybe we start with the basics. So we'll, uh, let's open that graphic equalizer uh, menu up here on the corner. So yep. I'm going to tap that. And over here on the right, um, I have G, R, S, C, G. What's all this stuff, Tom? Okay, so let's start at the top with the G. And that's your the radar's gain. Um, Think of gain as, as, as like how much power the radar is pushing out. Um, and you can actually increase the gain until the radar gets what we like to say a little dirty. And you'll notice the edges get fuzzy. You'll see a bunch of interference and you know, okay, I've put too much power into it. It's kind of like turning the volume up on a cheap speaker. Yeah. You, you, you know when it's you amazing. went too far. Um, a crackly. Right. But... Um, the gain is something that you can play with and, and set. Our radars are, are in the auto mode are pretty tolerable of uh, increasing the gain. Um, and you can really make the radar as sensitive as possible by increasing that gain. And think of the gain almost as that squelch button on your VHF radio. Whereas you would turn the squelch down till the speaker makes noise, and then you would just turn it back up again so you silenced or quiet the radio. Mm -hmm. That's kind of one of what you do with the, what you'd like to do with the gain. Turn it up till it gets a little dirty, drop it back down a few clicks till the screen cleans up, and then really you've optimized that radar you know gain for for what you're doing. Yeah, that is actually a really good comparison for for how to set it up. Yeah. Another thing I'll just throw in there real quick, because you may notice as you're following along on the video, um, that menu, if you don't do anything with it after about five seconds, it closes automatically. So I'm going to click to open it up again. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's this one, R? So R is a great one, but you got to be careful with it. Okay. So R stands for rain. Um, and as you are operating a radar in a rainstorm, um, you will see that rain and especially if, if you're in like a just a light mist or something probably don't need to use the rain control 
But if you get out into a pretty good downpour, um, the rain is going to, to filter out. The rain filter is basically what it is. It filters out all the noise that the rain is creating. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're out there on a stormy day, um, it's definitely your good, a friend, and it, it helps you to be able to you know, get rid of the, the rain so you can see some of those targets. But you've got to be careful with that, that filter because you increase that rain filter too much, you can actually start wiping out some of those smaller close-in targets. And conversely, if you are out there in a rainy environment and then you bring the boat back to the dock, it's very important to set that back to zero because, again, if you go out there and it's not a rainy day, that filter can actually, like I say, wipe out yeah, some wipe of the radar returns that you actually targets. want to see. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good idea. Whenever you are in those type of conditions, or um, you know, periodically change it up. Uh, go in, you know, turn the filter up, turn the filter down. Just take a look, make sure you aren't wiping out anything uh, close to the boat, and then you know, reset it to whatever is appropriate for the conditions that you're in. Right. And of course, at the start of your patrol or your shift, you know, it's a right. good idea just to to go in and see yeah. where everything is as a baseline. And we'll when Jim clicks on the menu again, I'm just going to jump down to the bottom real fast, and you see the all to auto. That button is kind of a fantastic button for us. Really what it does is it brings the radar to factory settings out of the box. You know it's going to work at those settings. Mm -hmm. um, you can then go in and kind of tweak everything, uh, you know, back the way you want it. But if you do get on the boat and you find out that you say to yourself, wow, something's wrong with this radar. I don't know what's going on. That all to auto is a great thing to have. Brings you back to factory settings and you know that it's, it's going to work. Yeah, I've done that before myself. I'll, I'll get in there and start playing with it, and I'll get it into such a state that I lost the radar picture. I'm <laughs> right. Like, oh, I don't, I'm not quite sure what I did, and that all the auto button will bail you out every time. Yes, it does. So let's go back into that menu one more time. And the next one on that menu is the S, and that's for sea clutter. Um, sea clutter is another filter. Mm -hmm. um, you get out there on a day where you have maybe that two to three foot chop, um, you'll actually, the radar will actually pick up those wave tops. Yes. And on a you know a real rough day, um, that can really um, bring up so much targets on this on the display that you really don't know what's what. So by adding a little bit of sea clutter, when I say a little bit, I mean like you know one or two percent, one or two clicks at a time, um, you can knock down some of those wave tops so you can actually see those targets uh, that are in close to you. Again, it's a filter. Mm -hmm. So applying too much of that filter can, again, take away your targets just like the rain. Um, you'll see very quickly if you're out in, a, in those conditions that if you apply too much of that sea clutter, all of a sudden there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So uh, use those you know, as necessary, but use them cautiously. And, and most importantly, don't forget to reset them. I think there's one more in there. Um, there is. We didn't talk about yet, and that is CG. Yeah. And in this case, that is not Coast Guard, but it is. It is the color gain. Color gain. All right. Um, color gain is something that's really uh, a beneficial little tool, in my opinion. Really, what it does is it 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 adds color to the targets. The this radar that we're looking at is a 256 color radar. So the the radar returns in that bright red are your most solid. The yellows net being, you know, next as far as a hard target and then down into those light blues. But if you're looking at a shoreline or something, sometimes you can just kind of see like it's a little grainy. It's not as clear of a resolution as we'd like. And turning that color gain up so you just add a little bit more of that red into those targets can really define some of those finer edges. Um, kind of solidifies things. It does. Yeah. It's, it's a personal preference type of thing, really. Um, I like a little bit more color gain in, in my radar than other people do. Um, but I would encourage you to go in there and try it. Um, you really, you, you can't, you can't break it. So just go in there and play with it. Yeah. Color gain is one of those neat features too, in that um, you're purely manipulating the color palette. You're not actually changing the performance of the radar. Right. So the sensitivity settings, the filtering, all that stuff is all wherever it is set, whether it's automatic or you have tweaked it. Um, but you're just purely playing with the presentation right there on the local right unlike scope. the other settings the other filters you will not wipe out any targets on this it's just going they're just going to change how the target is is it's represented yeah. whether it's real dark red or very light blue so um i think we've got some other menu settings in here let's take a peek at these and again they're all off, off this top right button here you got the, the the three lines some people call it the uh, the cheeseburger the sandwich stack um so let's see we have our transmit control transmit or standby transmit on and off yeah pretty simple. all right yep 
Um, so Doppler mode, we talked a little bit about Doppler at the beginning. Can you, in a nutshell, tell me what does Doppler mode do? I'll turn it on. Yeah. Tell me what's going on here. Uh, Doppler mode is, is, is exactly what it does, right? It puts the, do the radar into the Doppler mode. The Doppler is, is a very good tool for measuring speed. Um, and what basically happens on the Doppler mode on the radar is you do see all of the targets that you would see on a normal radar, but we actually now are able to enhance moving targets. So if a if the radar senses that a target is moving towards you or you're, you're vectoring toward that target, that target is going to appear in red. And if a target is moving, but it's vectoring or moving away from you, that target will be green. green. It's very important when you're in the Doppler mode not to get really fixated on red and green because there's other things on that radar scope like those three targets ahead and you know port and starboard of the vessel at this stage of the game that can hurt you. Yeah. Those are those are targets. And in, in the Doppler mode, those would be stationary targets, maybe a boat that's at on a mooring, on anchor. But you, you can't overlook those targets. You can't just be fixated on red and green. Yeah, yeah, that happens uh, quite a lot, especially with someone new to Doppler radar. Yeah, the it's it's easy to get wrapped up in, oh, that's moving, that's getting closer, oh, that one's moving away. Um, and you don't realize that, yeah, there's a stationary contact there too, and you run into it. Right. You don't want to do that. No. Um, yeah, so in this display here, we've got this green target, which is theoretically moving closer to the center of the scope, uh, or sorry, uh, moving away from the center of the scope. Uh, these reds would be moving closer. And all these gray targets, these are all stationary or holding position relative uh, to where we are. They could be uh, at the same course and same speed we are, um, and just maintaining a, a, the constant distance. So, right. All right. So back up in that menu where we turned the Doppler mode on, I'm going to turn it back off for now. Yeah. Uh, we have sensitivity. And I think this is the same menu we were looking at previously, right? Right. Just exactly. Another way to get in here. Just a different way to get to it. Okay. Uh, targets. And yeah, we'll skip the targets for an another day. Yeah. That's probably a more advanced uh, topic, but that has to do with target tracking and AIS. You'll right. find that sort of stuff in there. Uh -huh. uh, radar related alarms. Yeah. Again, we'll uh, we'll do another video and get in detail on these, but you can specify basically a watch zone or a guard zone. Um, you can specify um, a safety zone around the boat, and if someone's going to pass through it, you can get alarms related to it. So it's the configuration for that sort of thing. Um, we come down to the bottom. We have these four mode buttons. So I see we've got harbor, coastal, offshore, weather. What do these do for us, Tom? So these are some preset uh, gains and filters that our engineering staff, when they, you know, built the products kind of put in um, to optimize the radar for those particular conditions. Uh, it's not set in stone. You can adjust those settings within, but just for a quick, you know, um, uh, way to get you into the, the radar working a little bit better in a harbor where there's more targets, there's going to be a little bit more noise. There's some more filtering included in there. Okay. Um, you go out into the coastal or to the offshore mode, there's less noise around you, right? You're not in as much target of a rich environment. So those, those, that filtering has been removed and it's going to allow you to see a little bit more around the boat. Um, it's something that you can play with. It's also worth noting that in the four radars that we mentioned earlier, uh, that that setting will look different on all four of those radars. You might see it say bird mode or buoy or, or something different. So, yeah, I think a good example like this um, simulation that we're looking at here is a simulation of a Quantum 2 radar. Um, and the Quantum 2 radars have this mode called weather mode. Um, it actually helps them to see um, thunderstorms and things like that coming through. Um, but some of the other radar models don't have that weather mode because they use a slightly different technology. Um, so if you have a Quantum, you'll see weather. If you have something else on your patrol boat, you'll see perhaps some different options in there. Right. Well, very good. And I think there's also some advanced uh, settings. That's really the final thing down here. Um, you'll see that gears menu in the bottom of, of every Raymarine menu. And this is to really get into the, oh, the nuts and bolts and the installation parameters for the radar. Um, more often than not, you probably will not be changing anything in here, but that's what it is just to kind of close out that menu and, and show you um, all that is in there. And of course, you can just tap anywhere out on the screen and that closes the menu and, and gets you back to the radar scope. Mm -hmm. So one other thing we didn't talk about, Tom, was radar overlay. Yeah. Um, so radar overlay is something that all of our Axiom displays support. Correct. And I, I know it's a tool that for people that are not super familiar with radar, sometimes it comes in handy. Can you describe what it is? 
Right. So, you know, Jim, radar overlay is very simple. It's, it's what it says it is. It's overlay on top of your chart. Um, in the past, you know, our radar overlays were not great colors, if you ask me personally, but we have changed that. And you can actually now take this full 256 color radar and put it right over the top of the chart. And I never used to be a radar overlay fan. I am now. Um, it really does make, um, you know, radar for guys that are, are kind of new to it. Uh, you can become a lot more familiar with the radar because when you see that return, if it's sitting on the top of a buoy or over the top of a land or, a, you know, a break wall or whatever it might be, you know, you could associate very quickly that, hey, that actually is a target. And it's good to, you know, to train yourself how to be able to see that. If you see a vessel, you know, target out in the open water in the chart, you know, it's going to be a boat of some sort. Um, so it just gives you that, that, that uh, you know, kind of quick uh, situational awareness. Um, there might be some boats out there that, that only have a single screen um, and maybe, you know, you don't want to go into the split mode, uh, split page mode. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another point where radar overlay really comes in handy. But um, I think that 256 color really makes it a very usable tool. Yeah, um, it's definitely a nice option to have available in there. And uh, you'll find that in the chart app. Yep. Well, that kind of wraps up our basic overview of radar for first responders. Um, if you have questions or comments, definitely drop those in down below. We do try to answer all the questions and all the feedback that gets put in there. Of course, if you are interested in Raymarine gear for your agency, for your patrol boat, certainly get in touch with us. We have people on staff uh, that can get you uh, set up with the right gear to complete your mission. Uh, so with that, thank you for tuning in for our uh, first responder series. Watch for additional episodes coming up. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channels to be notified whenever we have new content. Thanks for watching today, and we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.